Well, let's talk about a subject that's very sensitive to everybody. Something that a lot of people question me about. So let's get on with that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Junk Guys, the go-to destination for business insights and strategies. Today, we're gonna try to dive deep into the junk removal industry, peeling back the layers of a challenge faced by many entrepreneurs, that perpetual rat race but wait, this isn't just another tale of struggle. Today, we're going to explore a different narrative, a path less traveled. Picture this, breaking free from the chains of constant spending, liberating your business from the clutches of unreliable leads and steering clear of the high cost of traps of SEO and advertising. What if I told you there was a strategic way to propel your junk removal business forward without burning a hole in your pocket? Buckle up because in this segment, we're unraveling the reasons why I choose not to pay for SEO ads or leads in the junk removal industry. We delve into the small decisions from the uncertainty, uh, uncertainties of a return on investment to the pitfalls of depending on third party platforms. I'm just not talking about challenges. We're exploring alternatives uh, that prioritize long-term sustainability and growth. So whether you're an industry veteran seeking a new perspective or a, or a budding entrepreneur eager to build a business that stands the test of time, this segment is for you. So get ready. I want to tell you so you can realize your strategy as we unveil the secrets to escaping the junk removal rat race. Stick around because by the end of this video, you'll be equipped with the insights that could reshape the trajectory of your business. Welcome to the next level of entrepreneur wisdom now, right here on the Junk Removal Service channel. Uh, let's dive in. Ladies and gentlemen, I made a list of reasons why I do not use paid ads. And this is the actual reason why I've never done it. So 16 years when I started my business, don't forget guys, you need to realize that these platforms were not out there. You made those platforms exist. You made SEO exist. You made, C you made CRM exist. Those things were not done back in the day. So there was nothing for me to buy or use. I mean, Google didn't even really exist at the time. But I also realized that it's out there now, but why don't I use uh, something like an ROI, a return on investment? Why would I need that if I know how much money I make? Is that for something for, to brag on Facebook or to tell people about? That's my business. That's nobody else's business, right? I don't ask you if your, your wife is on her period. I don't ask questions like that. I ask questions that pertain to the industry, not to my business. Number one, why I don't pay for SEO and ads. It's high cost and uncertain returns. Investing in SEO and paid advertising can be expensive. And you know who I'm talking to, especially for competitive keywords like junk removal. There's no guarantee of immediate returns and the cost may outweigh the benefits, especially for a small business upcoming new junk removal owner. And I think you know who you are. So by the way, a, a junk removal business doesn't see profit until the fourth or fifth year. And any business that stays in business is like that service business. Okay. That's just a proven fact. That's not something I make up. Number two, dependency on third party platforms. Why rely on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, or a lead generation services to put you, you put your business at the mercy of their algorithm and policies. All of a sudden, changes can impact your visibility or lead generation. And I'm telling you, folks, this is something you need to think about. Number three, losing sleep over ineffective ad spend, letting it bother you. Ads, many businesses struggle with creating effective ad campaigns. Poorly targeted ads can be uninspiring content can lead to wasted ad spend without generating meaningful leads or returns. Competition, number four, competition. This industry can be highly competitive when it comes to SEO and ads. And a lot of people say it's saturated. 
Trying to rank for popular keywords or outbid competitors in advertising and auctions might not even be cost effective, especially for businesses or small new entrepreneurs with limited budgets. It doesn't make any sense. You're better off posting on Facebook or Craigslist just to start off with. Number five, and I think we're all gonna know this one. The quality of leads, leads can be deceptive. Purchasing leads doesn't guarantee their quality. Often these leads may be unqualified or uninterested, resulting in wasted time and effort. And most of the time, these leads are fake. Number six, unpredictability lead sources. Exactly what I just said on SEO and ads. Continuous investment in ads and SEO can create a dependency on these channels. If the flow of paid traffic stops, the business might struggle to maintain a consistent customer base. Number eight, shift in consumer behavior. Okay, so what I meant is SEO ads, uh, consumer behavior evolves. And what works today might not work tomorrow. Spending heavily on a specific um, ad or a specific keyword without diversification or can be a risky uh, dynamic market, especially if you're marketing in a low income area to a high income area or an income or an area that have ran out of hot tubs. And that is very possible. Number nine, negative ROI, ROI expensive, which is a return on investment on SEO and ads, a very negative one. Some businesses might have had negative experiences with the previous SEO or ad campaigns, but guess what? We keep on doing it, leading to skepticism about their effectiveness. And I'm here telling you about it right here. Number 10, preference for organic growth, SEO. Some business owners prefer a more organic approach like myself, focusing on word of mouth, referrals, community engagement, rather than relying on paid strategies. Number 11, long-term sustainability. Investing time and effort in SEO can provide long-term benefits. While it might take time to see results, the sustainability and long-term cost effectiveness can outweigh the immediate gains and for, from paid strategies. In summary, businesses in the junk removal industry might opt not to pay for SEO ads or leads due to concerns about costs and certain returns, dependency on third-party platform, and desire for more sustainable and organic growth strategies. So with that, I want to say, why do I go pick up refrigerators for $45? Why do I do hot tubs for $300? Why do I pick up upright pianos for $200? I will tell you why. I'm not paying anybody for that lead. It is none of your business. See, you're not paying my bill. And the last time I remember you paying for my truck or my mortgage, I can't remember. So it's none of your business. So whenever someone posts something online and it just doesn't make sense to that person and then they come back and they say something silly like, hey, I want to see your bank statement or I want to see this or I want to see that. I'm, hey, how, don't you pick up refrigerators? Yeah, I pick up refrigerators. And don't forget, I pick up refrigerators for $45. Those same refrigerators I use at my haunted house. I use over 150 refrigerators for my haunted house. But nobody says that because my haunted house makes more income than most of you, the junk removal owners. And I will bet that on the farm, okay? SEO and paying for ads is such a deceptive, risky strategy. Something that wasn't there 16 years ago, and I'm glad I'm not running that rat race. Because most of us small junk removal owners will get stuck in it. Why? Because they heard about it and they're trying to. And now the dependency on these third-party platforms is driving most of us to the death of our business. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the go-to destination for business insights and strategies.
And diving deep into this industry and peeling back the layers of SEO and the layers of that many entrepreneurs struggle with, the perpetual rat race. It's just another tell of struggle. It's exploring a different narrative, a path, I guess, less traveled. Picture this. Imagine your business breaking free from the chains of constant ad spend and liberating your business from the clutches of unreliable leads and steering clear of the high cost traps of SEO and advertising. And that's why I have the Dallas Junk Removal Summit this month. If you think that I'm making any money charging $150 to anybody to come to my property, you're fucking stupid. I'm going to be honest with you. $150 to come to my property so I can teach y'all about junk removal doesn't make any sense. It might think that I'm like the dollar store of, of, uh, of giving workshops about SEO. No, I'm a professional at SEO when it comes to junk removal. And there's no doubt about it. I will tell you this, that when I hold this summit, and if you decide not to go, that's fine. But the people that come to the summit in Dallas on March 14th, 15th, and 16th, is going to realize that all the information that I give you is 16 years, 16 years of successful junk removal ownership. This isn't that bullshit that other people will say online that they make this and they sell their business. When people say they sell their business, it's because they went out of business and the embarrassment on their ego is too much to say that they went bankrupt. Come to the Dallas Junk Removal Summit where I will make a whopping $150 per person. Whatever, man. I want people to learn about junk removal and start companies that are successful. So every year when I'm in business, since I've been doing it for 16 years, I'm not seeing blow Joe go out of business and then some other dick comes in and takes it. I want the people that originated this business to stay in business because of the service brand. The last time I checked, we're not plumbers. We're not roofers. We're not electricians. Hell, we're not even carpenters. And we're definitely, definitely not landscapers. But everybody else knows who the hell they are. We are low man on the totem pole. Nobody knows what the hell we do. Period. And that's the truth. You know, on my way home from Los Angeles, from Andrew's awesome meet and greet, I realized something when I was sitting next to the guy next to me. His name was Danny. And Danny was one of the most intelligent person I have met in a long time, talking about AI, diversity in AI, how AI is going to change the world, logistics from China, to Dallas, and in between. And after his 45-minute reel about what he does and me not understanding a damn thing that came out of his mouth, he asked me what I did. And I want you to think about this. I told him I owned a junk removal service called Junk Guys. I even tried to pull it out on my phone since I paid for the Wi-Fi. And I showed it to him. And he says, what exactly is that? Another 30 minutes explaining to him what we do. He said, why would y'all pick up trash when the city takes it? Don't they come once a month and take bulk trash? And I kept on explaining to Danny that this is a niche service. So imagine there was over 200 people on that plane. Imagine how many people know what a junk removal service owner does. Because I'm pretty sure those 220 people on that plane know what a roofer does. And I'll leave you with that. We need to stay in business. The more people there are in business and the more the service gets popular, in the long run, the more money I make. I'm running a marathon. If you're running a race, I'll see you at the finish line because I will eventually finish, not you. Thanks, guys.